Good afternoon. Today we begin the spiritual journey that spans from 40 days from Ash Wednesday until the Saturday before Easter. In the early days of the church, the season of Lent was a time of preparation for converts as they readied their hearts to enter into the Christian baptism on Easter Sunday. In addition, Ash Wednesday was the time when those who had been separated from the church because of sin would prepare to rejoin the community of faith. Since these members were to be received into a living community of faith, the entire community was called to preparation. Today, the season of Lent is a time of prayer, fasting, self-examination, and repentance for all Christians as we prepare to celebrate Easter. Through this 40-day journey, we are reminded that we are totally unworthy before God, that we have nothing with which we can obtain salvation, and that our best efforts at being righteous fall short. The season reminds us how much we need grace in our lives in order to live transformed lives that reflect God's love. Thus, we are called to renew our commitment and our faith as we continually acknowledge our need of God's transforming presence with us. Thus, we invite you to the observance of Lent through self-examination, repentance, prayer, fasting, self-denial, and the reading and meditating of God's holy word. Therefore, in order for our hearts to be right with God and as a mark of our moral nature, let us now invite God to examine our hearts as we wait silently before him. Would you pray with me, please? O oh God, maker of everything and judge of all that you have made, from the dust of the earth you have formed us, and from the dust of death you will raise us up. By the redemptive power of the cross, create in us clean hearts and put within us a new spirit that we may repent of our sins and lead lives worthy of your calling through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear now the words of scripture from the book of Isaiah, chapter 58, verses 1 through 12. Shout loudly. Don't hold back. Raise your voice like a trumpet. Announce to my people their crime, to the house of Jacob their sins. They seek me day after day, desiring knowledge of my ways like a nation that acted righteously, that didn't abandon their God. <coughs> they ask me for righteous judgments, wanting to be close to God. Why do we fast and you don't see? Why afflict ourselves and you don't notice? Yet on your fast day, you do whatever you want and oppress all your workers. You quarrel and brawl, and then you fast. You hit each other violently with your fist. You shouldn't fast as you are doing today if you want to make your voice heard on high. Is this the kind of fast I choose? A day of self-affliction, of bending one's head like a reed and of lying down in the morning clothes and ashes? Is this what you call a fast, a daily acceptable to the Lord? Isn't this the fast I choose? releasing wicked restraints, and tying the ropes of a yoke, setting free the mistreated, and breaking every yoke. Isn't it sharing your bread with the hungry and bringing the homeless poor into your house, covering the naked when you see them, and not hiding from your own family? Then your light will break out like the dawn, and you will be healed quickly. Your own righteousness will walk before you, and the Lord's glory will be your rear guard. Then you will call and the Lord will answer, you will cry for help, and God will say, I'm here. If you remove the yoke from among you, the finger-pointed wicked speech, if you open your heart to the hungry and provide abundantly for those who are afflicted, your light will shine in the darkness, and your gloom will be like the noon. The Lord will guide you continually and provide for you, even in parched places. He will rescue your bones. You will be like a watered garden, like a spring of water that won't run dry. They will rebuild the ancient ruins on your account. 
that foundations and generations past you will restore. You will be called mender of broken walls, restorer of livable streets. Then our epistle lesson today comes from the book of 2 Corinthians, verses chapter 5, verses 20 through 6.10. So we are ambassadors who re represent Christ. God is negotiating with you through us. We beg you as Christ's representatives, be reconciled to God. God caused the one who didn't know sin to be sin for our sake so that through him we could become the righteousness of God. Since we work together with him, we are also begging you not to receive the grace of God in vain. He says, I listened to you at the right time, and I helped you on the day of salvation. Look, now is the right time. Look, now is the day of salvation. We don't give anyone any reason to be offended about anything so that our ministry won't be criticized. Instead, we commend ourselves as ministers of God in every way. We did this when our great endurance through problems, disasters, and stressful situations. We went through beatings, imprisonments, and riots. We experienced hard generosity. We served with the Holy Spirit genuine love, telling the truth in God's power. We carried the weapons of righteousness in our right hand and our left hand. We were treated with honor and dishonor and with verbal abuse and good evaluation. We were seen as both fake and real, as unknown and well-known, as dying, and look, we are alive. We were seen as punished but not killed, as going through pain but always happy, as poor but making many rich, and as having nothing but owing everything. And then our gospel this morning comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 6, verses 1 through 6, and 16 to 21. Be careful that you don't practice your religion in front of people to draw their attention. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. Whenever you give to the poor, don't blow your trumpet as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets so that they may get praises from people. I assure you, that's the only reward you'll get. But when you give to the poor, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that you may give to the poor in secret. Your Father who sees what you do in secret will reward you. When you pray, don't be like the hypocrites. They love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners so that people will see them. I assure you, that's the only reward they'll get. But when you pray, go to your room, shut your door, and pray to your Father who is present in that secret place. Your Father who sees what you do in secret will reward you. And when you fast, don't put on a sad face like the hypocrites. They distort their faces so people will know they are fasting. I assure you that they have their reward. When you fast, brush your hair and wash your face. Then you won't look like you're fasting to people, but only to your Father who is present in that secret place. Your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Stop collecting treasures for your own benefit on earth where moth and rust eat them and where thieves break in and steal them. Instead, collect treasures for yourselves in heaven where moth and rust don't eat them and where thieves don't break in and steal them. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Our prayer of confession today comes from the book of Psalms, chapter or Psalm 51, verses 1 through 17. Cast me not away from your presence and take your Holy Spirit and not take your Holy Spirit from me. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Have mercy, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my inequity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and sin is ever before me. Against you, you only, have I sinned and done that which is evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless in your judgment. Behold, I was born into inequity, and I have been sinful since my mother conceived me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Behold, you desire truth in the inward being, Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. 
Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me here with joy and gladness. Let the bones which you have broken rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out my inequities. Cast me not away from your presence. And take not your Holy Spirit from me. Create in me a clean heart, O God. And renew a right spirit within me. Create in me a clean heart, O God. And put a new and right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence. And take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain in me a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from death, O God, God of my salvation, and my tongue will sing aloud for your deliverance. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth shall show forth your praise. For you have no delight in sacrifice. Were I to give a burnt offering, you would not be pleased. The sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit. A broken and contrite heart, O oh God, you will not despise. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Today's devotional reading is focused on Isaiah chapter 58, 1 through 12, and it comes from our United Methodist Lenten devotional of 2022 that was written by our pastors and laity in our Indiana conference. Isaiah 58 says, Is not this the fast that I choose to loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the throngs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke? Bishop Trimble writes, Lent is often associated with a time of sacrifice and fasting, giving something up for 40 days. But we must do so with caution. In Isaiah 58, 1 through 12, the prophet Isaiah reminds us that our religious rituals can advertise our hypocrisy if we think we are impressing God. Look, you fast only to quarrel and fight and to strike with a wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. Isaiah is clear that the fast God chooses is related to losing the bonds of injustice, and letting the oppressed go free. So as you approach this season of Lent, may you be inspired by the things that are near to God's heart, like sharing your food with the hungry and providing the poor wanderer and shelter. When you see the naked, to clothe them and to not turn away from your own flesh and blood. Go today knowing that you are a living witness for Jesus Christ. Our light shines brightest as we are helping others and are guided by the Lord continually. So be encouraged. Will you pray with me, please? Loving God, help me journey these 40 days of Lent as a living witness for Jesus with the commitment to do no harm, do good with a spirit of gratitude, and to stay in love with you. Amen. And so as you go from here this afternoon, may the almighty and merciful God, who desires not the death of a sinner, but to turn from wickedness and live. Accept your repentance, forgive your sins, and restore you by the Holy Spirit to the newness of life. Amen. I want to thank you for attending this afternoon's devotional. For those of you who would like to worship with us in uh, the sanctuary, our services are tonight at 7 p.m., at 1500 North A Street in Elwood, Indiana, and you are welcome to attend.